Hi, so today we're going to talk about social stratification. And there's a couple of ways in which to approach uh, social stratification. Um, one way that I'm going to talk about it is this issue of poverty. And then in the next section I will talk about uh, inequality from the point of view of Karl Marx. So let's start with um, poverty. Uh, one thing I thought would be interesting would be to look at the statistical information that's out there on the issue of poverty, just to sort of give you that as a backdrop and to understand how, uh, how sociologists understand poverty. Well, first of all, if you've ever read anything about poverty, you might be familiar with the phrase poverty threshold. Poverty threshold is the way in which we define uh, statistically or quantifiably what poverty is. What is it, uh, how would we measure poverty? So, um, the poverty threshold was first uh, introduced by OMSB in 1963, and it's defined by the family. So if we were to say, okay, um, you know, in this household, this, this particular household is living underneath the poverty threshold, what we're talking about is the family that, that exists in that, in that household, whether it be one person or three people or, or more or less. So if, um, if we're defining it by family, we would say either everyone in the family is in poverty or no one is in, po in, in the family is in poverty. So we're really looking then at the characteristics of the family that we can then determine whether or not they are living below the poverty threshold. So generally speaking, we're looking about then about the number of people, and it makes a difference whether or not the people in this family are under 18, because they would be considered children, or if they're above the age of 65. Again, this sort of impacts the cost that we would have to um, use in, in terms of how much it would, it would cost to feed this family and it, you know, house this family. So an income threshold is determined given a particular family set of char characteristics. If that family's income is below that threshold, the family is in poverty. Again, we're not just looking at one person in, in the household or two people, but rather everyone who exists in that family and whether or not combined income, they would be considered underneath the poverty threshold. The poverty threshold is based on three criteria. The first is the cost of food. The second is housing, and three, total household members. Um, as I mentioned, the uh, poverty threshold was first introduced in 1963 um, by Olansky, and I thought I'd introduce um, a table, and this is a, the standard uh, in 1963, not 2008, so just so you know. This is um, how they determined poverty threshold in 1963. So if you notice in the left um, hand column, what you have there is the size of the family unit. And again, you see whether or not they're um, under the age of 65 or over, and, and this will make a difference. Um, because those who are over 65, of course, get benefits, right? Social Security, so this sort of um, helps them out a little bit and off offsets the cost. So in 1963, the poverty threshold for one person was considered to be $1,539. Um, if you had, um, if that person was under the age of 65, they put a little bit higher, and if they were um, over the age of 65, they put a little bit lower. Um, they also have in the second column low cost levels. So these are people that are living just above the poverty line, so near poverty or low income thresholds. Um, and then you see two person households or two, two people in a family. Um, the cost, again, based on the three criteria, food, housing, and, ho and total household numbers, is at $1,988. So in order to feed a family of two, um, it, would, it would cost $1,988. Um, and I believe this is, um, let me check here, I believe this is per year. Yeah, so that's uh, 1988 per year, and if the head of the household was under the age of 65, it's $2,050, and if the person, the head of the household was 65, or, uh, 65 years or older, it would be at $1,850. So you notice it, it goes up as you have more people in the household, so three persons would be uh, 2440 and four persons 3130, etc. So um, really quite low, and again, it's 1963, so it's, it's hard to estimate, but these are pretty low 
uh, thresholds. Um, specifically then, um, when we talk about the threshold, it became a little bit more sophisticated over the years. And so in 2004, this is the information that we have in terms of what we mean by income. So when we say, um, okay, total income for the household used to pay for these different things like food and housing, um, what are we talking about? So money income here is, is specified. What exactly do we mean by that? So according to the Census Bureau, uh, money income includes earning, unemployment compensation, workers' compensation, Social Security, Supplemental Security income, um, and you can you can read through this handout that I'll go ahead and post on the um, the lecture so that you know um, what constitutes as money income. Um, and then there's also what we call measure of need. So when we say someone lives below the poverty threshold, what we're trying to understand is okay, um, they're not making ends meet. They're, they have certain needs and they can't um, afford to maintain those. So poverty thresholds are the dollar amounts used to determine poverty status. So we're really looking at um, money at this point as far as um, how people afford to live on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and then each person or family is assigned to one out of 48 possible poverty thresholds. And that's basically based on um, 48 states in the U.S. Um, Alaska and Hawaii get treated a little bit differently because cost is so um, much more expensive than those states. So those tend to be in an, an entirely different category unto themselves. And so thresholds will then vary according to size of the family and the ages of the members, just like we had earlier in 1963. Um, the same thresholds are then used throughout the United States. They don't vary geographically except for, um, again, Hawaii and Alaska. Um, they are updated annually, so every year they try to account for inflation. And um, although their, their thresholds are used to reflect families' needs, they are really just intended as a statistical yardstick, not a complete statistic of what people and families need to live. So of course there are other factors that we could take into consideration, um, but as for the general rule, if we would have sort of a measuring yardstick or whatever, this would be one that we could use. And often um, government programs will use a different poverty measure, so, um, so there might be variations thereof. Um, so again, the poverty thresholds were originally derived um, in 1963. And they, uh, when I say food, so this is what they use, um, the U.S. Department of Agriculture food budgets designed for families under economic stress, and data about what portion of income families spent on food. So that was used as, as, a, as a calculation for um, the, the food dimension of the threshold. Um, in Table 1.2, what you have is, um, in 2004, what were the, the poverty guidelines. Uh, so this is a more recent guideline uh, four years ago. So in a family of one um, in 48 contiguous states in D.C., the um, poverty guideline was $9,310. So a fa um, one person was meant to live on $9,300, which is pretty outrageous if you think about it, especially um, looking at, say, the difference in between Virginia and California. C clearly, it would take a lot more money to live in L.A. than in other places in the country. Um, so as you, the family unit gets bigger, this um, guideline goes a little bit higher. So it's 12,490 for a family of two, 15,670 for a family of three, et cetera. So for basically each additional person, you would add $3,100. Um, in table 1.3, um, what we have here is a table um, that measures the size of family with the number of children within the family, so children under the age of 18. Um, so if you look at, say, a two-person household um, where there are two people and no children at all, you're, um, you're living underneath the poverty line if you are making $12,649. But if you have a child, then it becomes um, $13,020 because children are more expensive. Um, so if you look at, at the difference between, say, a five-person house and a six-person house, um, if you have no children, you have five people, but there's no children, your uh, poverty threshold is at 23,497. Um, and then it goes up if you, if you have one child, 
um, and then it goes down. So that first child really does increase your um, um, your po your cost. And as we have more children, um, between two and three, it actually will uh, go down a little bit, but then it'll go back up. So for a six-person household with, say, five children, um, the uh, threshold is around 24,768. 24, um, so again, it's, it's kind of a, an interesting measure in which to compare families with different size, um, with different amount of children. Okay, and then one point, table 1.4, um, it's just looking at a state-by-state state median household income, um, median being what's the average income um, in these different states, and you can see which state makes the most compared to um, those who make the least, and then compare that with, say, the, the poverty threshold. So in a, in a state where the wealth is, is quite high, um, it's going to be a very different economic reality versus states that have a lower median income. So if you want to just kind of look over that, maybe you are originally from another state, you can kind of compare it with, say, California and see how um, that works out. For your lecture-based assignment, what I'd like you to do is to answer a couple of discussion questions here or lecture-related questions about the poverty threshold. First, um, do you think the poverty threshold criteria is a fair one? Why or why not? And then go ahead and look at Table 1.3, the one on poverty thresholds for size of family and number of related children. And I want you to see if you can interpret the difference between a three-person family and a four-person family.